Welcome to our latest rebroadcast, podcast number 76. Michael urges viewers to heed the signs, staying true to your own convictions, featuring Mike from COT on the End Generation Project, originally aired on May 20, 2024, exclusively on Council of Time.com. Check the link in the description below. Join Michael from Council of Time as we delve into eschatology amidst today's challenges in this captivating episode. To gain deeper insights, visit the Council of Time's official website linked below. We're committed to offering truth, hope, and assistance to those battling addiction while seeking divine guidance. Your backing fuels our mission to lead individuals towards truth, sobriety, and readiness for the perilous times foretold in Scripture. Join our exclusive Locals community for EGP family members and enjoy early access to exciting content. Thank you for being an integral part of the End Generation Project's success. Before diving into today's rebroadcast podcast, episode 76, Michael urges viewers to heed the signs, staying true to your own convictions. We're excited to introduce our new merchandise line. Our merchandise, including t-shirts, mugs, and bags, directly supports the operation of this channel. Every purchase helps sustain our content creation efforts. Shop now and make a meaningful impact. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this most riveting and insightful podcast. Michael urges viewers to heed the signs. Staying true to your own convictions, episode number 76 on End Generation Project. Blessings to all. Okay, everybody, let's get started, shall we? Good to see you guys. Well, are you guys ready for uh, the big betrayal? It's on the way. So is somebody else. Somebody else is on the way. Guaranteed to embrace the Middle East with sweeping, with a sweeping embrace. Sounds like a good thing, right? No, it is not. It is not a good thing. It is a long-awaited thing, but it's not a good thing. Good evening, everybody out there. This is Monday, May 20th. Can you believe it already, May 20th? Hmm. You know, there were so many predictions about today. You guys do realize that, don't you? So many predictions about today. I remember at the beginning of the year, everybody was saying that May 18th and May 19th, the great earthquake would hit. That's what they said. That was based off uh, some other folks. You know, it amazes me that God put the answer in you. If you ever want to know what tomorrow's going to be like, the answer's in you. Right? The answer's in you. He put the answer in you. But it's amazing how we look to other sources to try and find that out. I can't do that because uh, that just jumbles my mind, right? In fact, I, I can, in truth, I can only look into the Bible's prophecies because I trust them. But the Lord has set up a foolproof calendar in you. He really is based in you. As you guys grow as a whole and as you change, so does the world. Remember that. That's all you have to do. Remember that. Kids who are born are adapted to the time they're going to live in. You want to know something about the future, begin to examine the children. You'll see. You'll see. You'll quickly see that has never failed. Never. You know how when you guys were small or you had small children and you can't quite identify with your kids, you're saying, wow, these kids are aggressive. These kids are, you know, this and they're that. And when they get older around 10 years old, where they begin to interact, you find out the world is adjusted to whatever personalities they have is what you find. Again, if you ever want to know what tomorrow holds, start looking into yourselves. Look into the children. The Lord put the truth in you. He put the absolute truth in you. For example, when you guys, long time ago, you guys remember, now tomorrow's not promised to anybody. But I remember, I specifically remember a time when I knew tomorrow would come, no matter what anybody thought, no matter what anybody said. I had an assurance about tomorrow. Do you guys remember the same? You knew somehow you were going to be around the next day. You knew it. You knew it. Then we get to the days that we live in now, and if if you're not inundated 
with everybody's idea about the future and you're in tune with yourselves, you can sense a shortening, a massive shortening of time. You could just sense it. You know that a great destruction is coming. You already know that. You're, you're trying to find out where it's coming from, right? That's what you're trying to find out. And, and, and due to form, things are, you know, they're slowly progressing, right? Take, for example, cryptocurrency, right? Cryptocurrency, you guys know what I said at the beginning of the year. Do you guys remember? You remember when cryptocurrency was low? And I said, well, you know, they were like, oh, that system is done, this, that, and the other. Nope. Bitcoin is certainly going to go to a very high level, right? Do you guys understand what's going to happen in the next three weeks? Do you know what's going to happen? And, of course, I study that crypto system itself. I study that system. I study that system because that system has been copied. That system is going to be utilized. That system is far different than what you know. You think it's just some, you know, private backdoor system that somebody has invented, right, to, to, to kind of give it to the big guy, right? Wrong. That's not what that is. Crypto is more of a test platform that is robust. It has survived everything. That's what crypto is. A lot of people think it's a Ponzi scheme. Well, here's the only, here's the bad thing about that. When you have countries that have trillion dollar investments in Bitcoin, you get a problem, don't you? And when you have those investments, right? You guys know about, some people know about mining. They know about authentication of numbers. They know about things of that nature. They understand that crypto start to outbalance other currencies. And that system is being highly adopted. They should even know that the U.S. government is going to be, they're going to utilize that system. So is Europe, so are all the other nations. They're going to utilize that system. Why? Because the system that you now live under has to be null and void. The governmental system that you guys have been used to has to be made ineffective. No one has power to stop it. No one. And it aligns perfectly with prophecy. As I read prophecy, I know that people... Sometimes, sometimes, when we interpret prophecy, we look at the context and we look at all the technology and the methods and all the systems that we have in the present day. Then people look at prophecy and they interpret prophecy based on what they can see. We can't do that. We should never do that. Prophecy should never be based off what we see. Prophecy should be based from a spiritual truth. No matter how ridiculous it seems. If the Lord gives you something nobody else has, or if he gives you something that the world does not agree with, you're on the right track. Everything that the world has agreed with has never taken place. And everything they said was impossible has normally happened. Given time, it has happened. But you guys have had those ideas of the impossible. But the problem was, problem was, it is not popular to call out some fantastic thing in the realm of the spirit, when you have so many in the world prospering from the things that they made, right? It's just like those people in Revelation who said, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? They bragged on the beast, right? They bragged on him. They had no idea he was about to be taken down. As soon as that kingdom comes into a fullness, it's going to be thrust into darkness. They don't know about that. Because at that time in Revelation, they totally abandoned God's prophecies. His word is not, prevailing in the earth like it used to. There is a remnant in the earth, right? The love of many has waxed cold. Many have fallen away from the faith. So at that time, there are going to be far and few in between true believers who understand prophecy, let alone understand the spiritual truth and the closure of prophecy itself. When you relate prophecy to these present-day events, you're always going to find yourself lacking because you're doing that based on sight. You're doing that based on what man has built, not what God said he was going to do. God is quite clear. And given time, given time, God will just convey to us. He'll display what will take place, and it will be the impossible. God is not a God of average doings. He certainly is not a God that my, man can figure him out. It's, so think about this. If we're thinking in an earthly context, how in the world can we discern what the Lord is doing in truth? You can't do that. That means God's mind is a little less than ours. 
And we know that's not the truth. The heavens, for example, people right now, they scoff at the heavens. They don't know what to make of it. They hear about systems and planets and things coming. They don't know what to do with that, so they ignore it. Today, looking around today, people are walking around as normal. One of the biggest events in history has happened. But who can discern it? It has happened. But see, to the world, it is so commonplace. So commonplace, they can't discern it. They have no shaking of the spirit. They have no Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost warnings. They don't. Something of magnitude took place. A world shaker has happened, and it will not be going backward. And it seems like very few are alerted to this issue. You know what? Right now would be a good time for people to uh, do some of those uh, emergency preparations for things, but because they can't see it, because they can't touch it, because they can't figure it out, they're not going to do anything, and it will be to their hurt. Need I remind you, you guys live in the year of demonstration. Since the beginning of the year, the death toll has been rising in every country. Not the death toll from war. The death toll from natural disasters. Natural disasters that the Lord Jesus Christ said would come. That the Father sent prophets to tell us it would come. A lot of people attribute these natural disasters to men's doings. I'm not going to do that. Man has messed up everything they ever attempted to manage. If that weren't the case, we'd be, we, we wouldn't be paying for electricity and water. We wouldn't have greedy people around, this and the other. We certainly would not have diseases. These weather phenomena. Every time somebody thinks that a great number of people, they really honestly believe that somehow man is doing it and they belong in the body of Christ, a worse thing will come. Do you know why? Because the Lord does not want his children believing in falsehoods. Oh, and by the way, see, here's the sentiment. If tornadoes wipe out a certain place, because death is involved, they say the devil did it. That's what they say. This is the devil's doing. The devil does not have that authority. He cannot determine who lives and who dies. Only Christ can do that. Christ has the keys of hell, death, and the grave. Nobody else. Christ will determine. Jesus of Nazareth will determine who stays and who does not who's condemned and who is not. He will determine that. He is the Redeemer. No one else is. So in order for somebody to pass, to die, right, it has to be agreed upon by Christ. He must command it. He is the Savior. He is. And we are saved through him, not through anyone else. So when a storm comes and it begins to consume lives, if a war comes and it consumes lives, the Lord is responsible for who lives and who dies. No one else, not demons, not Satan. If Satan if Satan were responsible for who lives and who dies, you would not be alive. He would have bumped you out of the way a long time ago. You're a troublemaker to the kingdom of darkness. Yes, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there is no condemnation in them that believe, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Isn't that you? Because every time you see darkness and you see the truth of darkness, what do you end up doing? You may sin for a long time, and as soon as that sin bites you and you see the fullness of that sin, what do you always do? You know what you say? Nope, I don't want any part of that. Then you say, Lord, forgive me. You start repenting. When you see the truth of the sin, you start repenting. So that means you don't even belong to the darkness of this world. So Satan is fighting to cover your identity, to hide your identity in the chaos he has constructed upon the earth. There's one thing that belongs to Satan on this earth. Do you guys know what it is? Anybody know what it is? What belongs, what by the word of God belongs to Satan on the face of the earth? Anybody know? Anybody? Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Start naming things of this world that are holy. Everybody names something. What's holy? What's holy that men are a part of that's in the earth? What is it? What is it? Hmm. A lot of answers coming back on that one. You remember when Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit? He was led to be tempted of the devil. He was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. He didn't just stumble and fall into the wilderness. 
He was led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted of the devil. He was led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted of the devil. What did the devil tempt Jesus with at the very end? The Bible says he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth in a moment of time. He said, these, all of these are given to me. I can give them to whomsoever I want. And if you bow down and worship me, I'll give them to you. You remember that? Now, Jesus cannot be tempted with a lie because he's a vessel of all truth, which means Satan told the truth, which means the prophets told the truth, which means the, the apostles told the truth and Revelation told the truth. That's why after all these happenings in Revelation, then you read the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. But that's in Revelation after a great many things happen. So who do these kingdoms belong to? According to the word of God, who do they belong to? Satan. That's who they belong to. Satan. God did not construct these kingdoms in the earth. Satan did. Satan influenced these systems and the intricacies of these systems. And what are people doing right now? I'll tell you what they do right now. They're out of balance. That's why God called you out of the world. The Bible says you're in this world, not of this world. He called you out of the world. He sanctified you. If that were not so, you would not believe in Jesus. These kingdoms are designed to do what? To keep you engaged in filth all the days of your life. Did you think you're going to find your way out of these systems or prosper in one of these systems? You have to agree to compromise to make it. That's why. That's why the Lord said to that soldier, when it was asked of them, what, what should they do? What should a soldier do who's under orders by other soldiers of armies that don't belong to the living God? What should they do? And God said, what? Be content with your wages. Exact no more than what's given to you. That's what he said. In other words, don't indulge in these systems. Do not indulge. You are of a different standard. At your daily controversy, Christians look upon these kingdoms and they can see the darkness and they really believe, some really believe that somebody's going to fix it. No, they're not. God will utterly destroy them all. That's what he said. Every idol is going to be hewn down. That's what he said. Every single last one. So what do you do in the meantime? You do exactly what the Lord assigned to you to do. He put you in the middle of darkness for a reason. You're a light, a city lit on a hill. You don't put a lamp in the sunlight. You put a lamp in the darkness. There's a miracle about a light. All lights have a miracle no matter how dim, no matter how bright. Do you know what that miracle is? It can be the smallest light in the world, and guess what? It will always propel the darkness. Always. So long as it's lit, so long as it's powered, it's going to propel the darkness no matter the size. Isn't that something? But darkness can never overtake the light. Isn't that something? And you are that light. See, when Jesus was in the world, he said in the Gospel of John, light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. See, they had a problem with Christ without knowing who he was. Why? Because men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. When your deeds are evil and a Christian comes around, you get away because your deeds are evil. See, all of us know about this because when we were in a specific position, when we were young trying to do that thing that we didn't want a minister to see or somebody who actually believed to see, what did we do? We put things behind our backs. We hit things. We got out of the way. We said, oh, no, I got to get out of the vicinity. So-and-so was coming, right? Conviction would fall. Why? Because that person had a light in them. And as soon as a person with a real light shows up, all those whose deeds are evil begin to hide just about everything that they are and everything they have. I had a friend that stuck a lit cigarette in his pocket. Now, it didn't burn, it didn't catch, blow up in the flames, but the clothing began to, you know, disintegrate, fiery red. 
That was funny, by the way. I had another friend that almost choked pretty bad because he did not want to exhale. Mouth full of smoke. He didn't want to exhale. Things like that would happen, right? Why? Because when you carry a light and somebody's these are evil, they're going to have a natural repulsion to you. That should give you an answer to some people with you. When you, when you are prayed up, when you're serious about the word of God, when you're walking outside and you're, you're, you just have a hope of the Lord within you, somebody may get near you and look at you and not like you. You may not understand why. It's the same reason you hid your darkness from somebody else who had the light. They will hide their darkness from you. That's why when you're walking in this world, give people room. Have an understanding of that and give people room. See yourselves in those people a long time ago and give people room. Always be approachable. Never put yourself in a position where people will run away from you. That's not what you want. You want to be approachable. That's how you impact lives. What good is it to have the truth if no one is going to hear anything you have to say? You know how when you, some of us, and some of us, we used to go around touting, well, you know, I know they didn't want to hear it, but I said it anyway. Yeah, but they're not listening to anything from you now because they won't even talk to you. And then the person who believes it, well, it's going to be their fault. They didn't listen. They're going to pay for it. Nope, doesn't work that way. If you take note of the walk of Christ, did Jesus ever just walk up to a person and start condemning them? No, he did not. Jesus taught and would go to sinner after sinner after sinner after sinner, and he would actually hear them. The woman with the issue of blood, Back in those times, that was disgusting and nasty. It was. That was scandalous. It was. A public disgrace. But what did Jesus do? He was kind, he was patient, and he did not condemn. He did not condemn. He lifted people up. That's what he did. He lifted them up. He even defended her by way of the truth, didn't he? Now, if you know anything about the culture back then, that was illegal. You know that, don't you? That was absolutely out of order and illegal. Jesus worked within a kindness. Why? Because when you have power, you don't go around showing everybody that you have power because you know you have power. The guy that walks around acting tough is trying to convey his toughness because he's not tough. The guy that holds his peace, that already knows what he can and cannot do, that person's going to hold their peace because they know what they're capable of. In other words, a person who is empowered need not show anybody they're empowered. But a person who is seeking power, they often demonstrate to everybody that they have power. Remember that too, so that you can understand who you're talking to, especially during these times. So it turns out an humble person is truly a person of power. A meek person is truly a person of power. A loud mouth is somebody who desires power. A big mouth is somebody who wants to convey a sense of power, but they don't have it. When you have power, that's the moment you never convey it. That's when you become very nice, very patient. And do you know why? Because you are equipped. In every case I know of, anybody who ever lashed out ended up being a coward. All those who held their peace ended up being just like King David. In every case. Now look within yourselves. When we are powerless about something, that's when we yell. When we can't change a situation, that's when we lash out. When we have power to change anything, that's when we're humble. When we have the wherewithal to make a difference, that's when we have meekness. Think about it. That's when you're calm. When you can do something about something else, that's when you're calm. And that's when you tell everybody else, hey, calm down, calm down. But when you have no power to do anything, you too are in a bit of chaos. You tend to try to convince everybody that you'll have power over this or power over that. But a person with power never does that. So I'll say it again as it turns out. Humility and meekness are trademarks, attributes of a person who's walking around with authority. Now, one of the Bible says, be careful to entertain strangers because you entertain angels unaware. No wonder God called us to a higher standard. The world, I guess we can all agree, 
has almost lost its mind and dropped many of its standards. And so now the elements of darkness that have been long awaited are arriving. Do you guys know that? They're arriving. Whether any of you agree with me or not, I'm going to be so bold as to say within the last 48 hours, life has been altered for everybody on the face of the earth. And they don't even know it. They don't know it. You'll begin to see it. You will. With or without me, you'll begin to see it. Because now we live in a time where darkness no longer has to hide itself. Do you know that? It doesn't. Darkness does not have to avoid the light. The light is almost withdrawn in the world. What is the ideology of most people who believe in Christ? You know what they say? Well, let's kind of back off. We have nothing to do with that. We have nothing to do, so let's just back off and go in this corner and celebrate amongst ourselves and let the world completely go into darkness. That's the sentiment. That's what's happening right now. Still, you have others that take advantage of those who have light in them. Right? We all know the adage, shepherds who shouldn't be shepherds. But don't worry. We never have to make that judgment because a wolf is coming. The wolf is coming for every shepherd. Do you know that? Every single last shepherd, a wolf is coming. Now, those, those who trust the Lord their God, who depend and do know Jesus of Nazareth, they will not be moved. Those who stand on a falsehood, they're going to run. They're going to see it's not worth it. They're not going to give up their lives for anybody else. They demonstrate that on a daily basis. They do. Those who believe God is calling you to a higher level of authenticity. And today is that day of change. Today is. Today is that day to enact what the Lord has given you to enact. People, for some reason, have been preoccupied with living for a long time. And that's always been a weird thing to me. It has been just so weird, right? Think, think about it. And I'm not trying to be comical, but a lot of people want to go to heaven, correct? They do. They want to go to be with the Lord. So why do they try to live a long life here on this earth and make themselves a paradise while they're here? Never understood that. Why not go to work and give it your all? And then go stand before the Lord. You guys remember that scripture. I'm going to just reiterate something real quick. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, pray that you're worthy, right? Pray that you're worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. Isn't that what people, people lock on to that, don't they? They do. Pray that you're worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, there's something to this in that passage. If you to, to, for the Lord to tell you to pray that you're worthy to escape all these things, the Bible says, and to stand before the Son of Man. What was he talking about, by the way? Anybody know? What was the Lord talking about? Hey, anybody. Just from the simple language of the Word of God, what was he talking about? Anybody? He was talking about all the events the disciples asked him about, correct? All those events he was talking about. He said, pray that you're worthy to escape all these things, all what, all these prophecies the Lord had given, all of them that he had talked about. He told us to pray that we're worthy to escape all those things and to stand before the Son of Man. He told us to be ready, didn't he? Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. And that too gets me. Now, I'm going to show you something real quick. To pray that you're worthy to escape all those things and to stand before the Son of Man. If a person escapes all those things, right, before they ever happen, you know how people say, people say, the Lord's coming to get us. Now, Paul says at the last trump, not the first, not the second, not the third, not the fourth, at the last trump. Now, the only trumpets that were given are in the book of Revelation, correct? And sure enough, at the last trump, the mystery of God should be finished. The mystery of the prophets should be finished. It's going to be finished. So we know that's the last trump, those who are alive at that time. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, it says, in, in the worst time in history, Michael, the prince of your people, Daniel, will stand up. The dead are going to be raised, some to everlasting life, some to everlasting contempt. But we know that's the last time, too. Those who are alive at that time are going to be transitioned into a different form. 
So we know that's the coming of the Lord, right? We know that. That's the coming of the Lord. But this is after the Antichrist. Remember what the disciples said? That day shall not come unless there come a falling away first, that man of perdition be revealed. So the man of perdition must be revealed before that day comes. So the Antichrist must be revealed before that day comes. You got to get that in your spirits. So what was Jesus talking about? If he said, pray that you're worthy to escape all those things and to stand before the Son of Man is to take no part of it. Correct? Is to take no part of seeing the Antichrist revealed. Is to take no part of some of the horrific things that will happen upon the face of the earth. But see, our perception of time is weird. But let me continue. So Jesus said, pray that you're worthy to escape all these things. So he's talking about not having to go through them. How does a person do that? How do you do that? You ready? It's very simple. The Lord told us how. Many, many times he told us how. You ready? It's to finish your race. Of all things the Lord told us to do, he said, run and don't faint. What did he say? He that endures until the end, the same shall be saved. He's talking about your end, the end of the race. The end of the race. Do you guys hear me? He's not talking about the end of the world, the end of the race. See, sometimes people, they see endure to the end. They're, they're thinking about the end of the world. But guess what? There are trillions and billions. A lot of people who pass before you, some standing before the Son of Man. The Lord said they did. You don't go into oblivion, not you. You're the ones that were born after Christ was resurrected. You don't go into the dirt and stay there. Sorry, that's not where you go. So he said, pray that you're worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. He already told us how. It is to finish your race. But, but you can't miss this part. Pray that you're worthy to escape all these things. That's number one. But number two, you better be praying that you're worthy to stand before the Son of Man. Oh, oh, there we go. Because he gave us a list of things of what he said will not stand before him. See, you don't want to go before him and he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You don't want that, do you? First of all, listen to what I'm saying. Jesus will say this to some. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And he's going to tell them, you did not Give me food when I was hungry. Give me drink when I was thirsty. Clothe me when I was naked. Visit me when I was in prison. And they will say, well, when did we see you in all these different ways? But they're going to brag, too. They're going to say, didn't we preach in your name? Yep. Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Yep. Didn't we do this and do that, do the other in your name? He's going to say, yes. And then he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. He'll give him a list of what they did not do. They'll say, when do we see you in prison? When do we see you hungry? When do we see you thirsty? When do we see you naked? And Jesus will say, what you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me. And what you have not done for the least of these, you have not done to me. Now, I looked up that term, least of these. Do you guys, you might want to look that up. You might want to look that up. See, a lot of people think, well, that's a person who believes, but is not quite up to the level with everybody else wrong. And when you first look at that, it's what it logically appears to be. That's not what it is. The least of these are the least of who? The least of humanity. The ones who don't believe. The sinners that are in the world. See, a sinner goes to jail. Sinners find themselves hungry. Sinners are going through all this stuff. And what you refuse to do for the sinner out there, you did not do for your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you, do you see how cliques do not work? These little groups that we get into, these cliques, they don't work. That the work of the gospel is number one. Now, how many people are comfortable sitting in the pews, not doing anything for the broken? Not the broken that we go out and select. Well, I don't like that broken because that broken is on crack or that broken drinks or that broken just robs somebody. Not that broken. They need to go ahead and die. No, this broken over here, the one who, you know, was crying. Yeah, they stole something, but they're nice. See what's happening? You see how Christians in this day and age pick and choose who's worthy and who's not? See, the Lord I read about went to the worst of the worst. 
He did. He went to a fisherman who was cursing. Now, he was cursing up a storm. He even cursed after he was a disciple. Some were compromised with money, greedy, taxing their own people. Some had professions worse than a harlot. It just so happens they ended up with the Lord. We can't let that stuff happen to us. To be one of these futurist Christians, I can't even say Christians, but those who act like Christians, because that word means Christ-like, those who pick and choose who's worthy and who is not. Because how many people have we looked over simply to get the easiest one, the one who offers the least resistance? And how many times has the Lord put on your heart the impossible person? In fact, you've got that impossible person in your life right now. The one that keeps showing up, the one that's like a turd that won't flush, that person. I know that language is yucky, but it sticks. Why do you think that person keeps coming back? Why do you think God sent you down in the place he did? And when he sets us down into a place we don't understand, we don't like, that makes us cry, that hurts us and everything else, we run away. How long are we going to keep running? How long are we going to keep trying to save our own skins, to live a comfortable life and not do the work of the Lord will call to do? And then expect to be able to stand before him? No. To stand before the Son of Man is to finish your race. To finish your race is to satisfy it based upon the Lord's words, his truth, not ours. In other words, we got to be careful not to live according to our own truth. The world is the one that teaches you. you got to live by your own truth. That's the world's philosophy, is it not? To have your own truth, I've heard that term so much, it makes me sick. Have your own truth. I don't want my own truth. I don't trust my own truth. Got lumps, many lumps. I call them knowledge knots. It's when something happens in life and like a cartoon, you get one of those knots on your head. I call those knowledge knots. I have lots of those, lots of those. And I know not to trust the flesh. The flesh is just like an animal. It seeks to preserve itself in every way. It will always seek out its own benefit. But the spirit man within you is very true. No matter how small, no matter how young, it is true. It is full of sacrifice, full of meekness, full of humility, full of power, full of resiliency. It is ready to go the distance all too often. We choose the way of the flesh, don't we? If you're one of those like I was at one bed several times in my life who said, oh, I just I blew it, right? Well, guess what? See, that's one of the glorious parts about the Lord. He's a redeemer, is he not? He's our Lord and Savior, is he not? That means today is the day of salvation, which means what he has for you, he has for you right now. Let me, get, let me tell you guys a principle I want to reiterate also. In the Bible, it says tomorrow's promise to no man. Is that correct? Is that correct, everybody? Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Is that correct? Is that correct? It's correct. Well, here's the principle. Since tomorrow is not promised to any man, then what the Lord has for you, he has for you today, not tomorrow, today. Do you hear me? What he has for you, he has for you today. So indeed, today is the day of salvation and of fulfillment because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. So what the Lord has for you, he has for you right now, not tomorrow. Do you all see that? You got to know that. You have to know it. The more you know that, the more your life is going to be altered. There's no way in the world. Uh, listen. There's no way in the world I'm trying to tell you guys, right? To be qualified among men to do things in these kingdoms of the earth is of the earth. To be qualified to do things in the realm of the kingdom of God is a different story altogether. There is no way I'm qualified to do anything in the realm of the kingdom of the living God unless I've been empowered, been helped and raised, been taught, trained, been blessed and powered by the living God. I shouldn't be affected. I shouldn't be able to communicate to people on different levels the way I do. It's not because I'm special. That's not what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a result of acceptance. 
not acceptance of all this worldly stuff, but to see the difference between the world and those things of our Father. And when you say yes to those things of your Father, for example, whatever he has for you, he has for you today. So then, who's going to stop you from getting what the Lord has for you today? You will, based on your choices. How many of you, see, when a person says, well, you know, I just can't quite see that. Well, as a consequence of that, because they can't see it, because they won't accept it, and they've forgotten about the walk of faith, we don't walk by sight. You're not supposed to see it. You're supposed to hear it of the Lord and act on it. Now, listen, because they can't see it, because they can't logically figure this out, they'll deny it. They'll refuse it. They won't accept it. They won't be put in position. And this will continue every time a person says internally, well, you know, I just can't see it. They keep continue to reject it. You put the brakes on that. You halt yourself from saying that. And you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am called by the spirit that nobody can see. I believe by faith that nobody can measure. I follow by a perseverance that nobody knows the origin to. This truly is a faith, not proof. We don't walk by sight, but by faith. The just shall live by faith. So in order to be just, you got to start making your decisions based on faith. See how easy that is? How easy is that? Not faith in just anything, but specifically faith in the Lord Jesus. Why does Mike emphasize having faith in the Lord Jesus so much, and so many other people say have faith in the prophets and faith in this, because Jesus is the word of God made flesh and dwelt, and dwelt among men. So there is no higher word than the word of Christ. No prophet spoke higher than Christ. Jesus is the word of God. The prophets were given a word from God, but Jesus is the word of God. And when he spoke it rumbled through every seam of existence. The principles stand in every facet of existence. Do you understand that? When Jesus spoke, it's absolute. That's why. And guess what? You have his words. You have the creator's words bound in a book. See, that's why people walk around irritated. Because they're choosing less than that highest word. If you read the Old Testament, you're going to start thinking one way. When you read the New Testament, it's a different thing altogether. And everybody who's read the New and the Old Testament or bounced between the two, they know that. It's like the Old Testament hits your rational mind. You say, okay, I get that. That's black and white. I can see that. As soon as you turn to the New Testament, you're in a brand new era. It is not like the Old Testament, is it? It's not. It's a change of mindset and indeed a change of spirit. There's a transition. Something happens between the two. And if you don't believe that, just do it. Go read something in the Old Testament. Start reading it. Start hearing the words of the prophets. And then go read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. It's totally different. Why? Because the words of Christ are not the words of men. They are pure. Every single last thing he spoke was directly from the living God, or else Jesus could not speak at all. He said, he said, what I speak, the Father has spoke. He even told us he's not doing anything, that the Father is doing it. He was trying to tell us he is his Father's word. That's why he said, I and the Father are one, just like you're one with your word. I don't hear you, I hear the words you speak what you type, but I do not hear you. You're somewhere else, but I can understand you based on what you convey. Hmm? My goodness. And here we have that authoritative word. And something in this earth is attempting to minimize it. Like a war nobody wants to speak of. Have you noticed that there have been people in the history of this earth, right? Listen to me. Clung, they, they, they started to go back to the Old Testament and they, de they developed these cults in the earth. They did. They abandoned the words of Christ. They used and picked apart the words of the prophets to make a cult and had people believing in dates. So they didn't get everything they could get from those folks. 
And in these cults, everything failed. Everything failed. Everything always failed. Everything came to nothing. You have those who walked, who lived, who understood the principles of Christ, and everything they did left a trail of healing. Have you ever noticed that? You can take the most unqualified person, and if they trust those words of Christ, those ideas of Christ, they do things they're not supposed to be able to do. They didn't earn their position. They didn't. They simply believed. They simply believed. Remember that about these words. And also, I have to ask you, now that you know about the words of Jesus being the highest word we could ever receive, I have to ask you this. This is the make or break question. This is it. One of the most important, uh, this is the most important question anybody could ever ask. Do you believe in what Jesus believed? Do you agree with what Jesus was doing? Do you? Do you know how many people Jesus just simply forgave? Do you know how many people he did not condemn? Should have been condemned, but they didn't. That thief on the cross, he didn't pay for anything, did he? He didn't pay for a thing. He stole from people, and he did not pay for anything. Are you you guys getting that? He did not reap what he sowed. Oh, boy, see, that that's it right there. There, there it is. He did not. You know, how many, you know how many things I've sown in life that I don't want to reap from? But then you read a passage about a thief on the cross who sincerely believed in Jesus of Nazareth. Boy, that's, that's, that's kind of like me. It is. He sincerely believed. And you know what Jesus said to that thief? He said, today, you're going to be with me in paradise today. That's what he said. Because he believed and he knew. He, you remember what he said? He said, this man has done nothing wrong. Now, in order for somebody to say this man has done nothing wrong, it means he was aware of what Jesus was speaking. He was aware of what Jesus was doing. And when he said he did nothing wrong, that means he agreed with what Jesus was saying and doing. I'm asking you, do you agree with what Jesus was saying? Do you agree with what he was doing? That is the make or break question. Do you know how many people in the world, they don't believe in what Jesus was doing because they cannot forgive everybody. They can't do it. What do you think Jesus said? If you don't forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive you. And a person who cannot forgive, they don't believe in what Jesus was doing because he he forgave the unforgivable. He looked at that thief. He said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. That was a thief. That was a crook, a criminal who robbed and stole from people, who hurt people, who damaged people. But he believed in what the Lord was doing. When you believe in the Messiah's work, that's your make or break moment. Because when you believe, your desire set changes. It does. When you believe in what Jesus was doing, when he went up to that woman with the issue of blood and protected her and forgave her, she did not earn forgiveness. She did not deserve forgiveness, but she received it anyway. I believe in that. But how many people out there When Jesus had forgiven the unforgivable, how many people out there actually thought about that? Why would he do that? Because he's of a different kingdom, which is of a different standard. There is no more eye for an eye. God made a decision. God made a decision because he operates in truth. He knows that if you sin on this earth, you have done nothing more than fallen prey to the deeds of Satan in the earth. So you're not the author of it. It has to be presented to you first. Then when you see it, you have to deal with it. Same problem in the garden when they ate of the tree of good and evil. See, when you know things, you have to deal with what you know, and you will act out on those things you know. And it can lead you directly into sin. Our Father knows what causes us to sin. What do you think when Satan is bound a thousand years, no one is sinning? And when he's loosed, Satan goes out and deceives. 
the inhabitants of the earth yet again. But when he's locked away, his influence is not in the earth, and nobody is even thinking about sin. Hallelujah. So then, the Lord knows, because of, because of Satan's influence, because of the influence of the fallen, that's why you're going to address the angels, not just any angels. But if you look at that original word, there's a mark before that word angels, and it implies the fallen angels. You're going to judge them. Why? Because you're living in the world that they have affected. That's why. This earth is a consequence. This corruption in the earth is a consequence of the seed they sow. And they will pay for it. You're going to judge them because you're living in their consequence or their consequential deeds, I should say. They prematurely gave man knowledge before man had the ability and wisdom to utilize it. And man did what they began to corrupt and destroy themselves with it. And culture has been building upon this ever since. And you're living in the aftermath of that. So everything that you do, see, when you're a baby, you know, you know nothing about sin as a baby, but you start to see it. And if you look carefully into your life, you're going to find out that when you did sin, you had to face a choice. You were choosing, weren't you? Weren't you choosing? Well, so-and-so did this. I saw so-and-so hit that person. Do you know that most of what you do is emulated? The Bible says it's not within a man to take a step of himself. That means everything you do is being influenced on a level that we can scarcely comprehend. So what did the Lord do? What did, what did our father do? Our father said, I'm going to send the last and final sacrifice. Whoever believes in the way of my living word, that person is going to be forgiven of everything. That person is going to be put back in position. And by the Holy Spirit, they will live their lives in truth. That's why it's not by works that, you know, salvation is a gift of grace, is it not? It's a gift given to us. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. It was given to us. It was the Father's declaration to save his children. From what? From the darkness. And so guess what's been happening? All the days of your life, you've been learning in truth what darkness is and what light is. And every single time you see the truth of darkness, you do the same thing. What do you do? You say, nope, that's the end of that. Won't none of that. I'm going the opposite direction. That's what you do. When you learn the truth of darkness, not when you know something is wrong. It's when you know the truth of darkness. It's when you know the truth of the sin you're doing. It's when you see the fullness of it. See, when you first sin, you say, oh, you know, nobody's going to care. That's what you may say. But then later on, you find out it can take from people. It can destroy people. It's causing damage. You find out Satan is vicious and sneaky, and you didn't know about all of what that sin was doing. And when you find out the fullness of it, you know what you do? You say, Lord, take this. I don't want any of this. That's what you say. That's what you say. That's when you learn to hate sin. That's the day you have repented, and you'll have no part of it. That's when it's removed from you, and you can never be tempted by it again. Until you see the truth of a sin, you can always be tempted by it. When you see the truth of it, that's when you make up your mind to get away from it. Now, your whole life has been full of grace and mercy. Why? Because if God did not give us grace and mercy, we would all have to die due to our sins. God knew we were going to sin because he put light and darkness before us. And he said, choose. And so we sampled darkness and light. We sampled it. That's how we choose, is it not? You can't choose between something you know nothing about. God is a God of truth, not fantasy, but truth. And so when you choose, you have to know the difference between darkness and light. So you enter into the darkness not knowing the fullness of it. When you see what it is, that's when you're done with it. That's why God has given you a lifetime. Do you see what he's doing? Can't you see why he's given us a life the way he's given us? Can't you see it? We're making choices in truth. And the only way to make that choice in truth is to know the elements we're choosing between. And sure enough, he sent his son that we would not perish in the process of making that true decision. What did God say to his people? You have to learn to do good. He ensured us that he would help us overcome. Yes, he did. He ensured us that he would deliver us. Yes, he did. But that's also admitting that we're going to fall headlong into some darkness. He already knew it. 
He said he would raise us up. He already knew what we would get into. But he also knew something else. If you're truly a seed born of God, when you see the truth of that darkness, you're going to choose Christ. That's what your life is about. See, if you're not careful, you're going to think and begin to condemn others and the process God gave them. See, here's the first mistake. If somebody is alive today, then God saw fit for that person to be alive. The time I've had on earth, I've needed every moment of it to make decisions. That's why people find themselves in very dark places. And they say, how in the world did I get here? Because you didn't know about it. Because you thought it was light. Because you didn't see the fullness of the darkness. And God works in truth and honesty. You're living out your choices. That's what your life is for. That's why this earth is not your paradise. Your passers by. You you were never meant for this to be your paradise. This is a process. Your whole life is part of the living God's work. All the animals, all the insects, all the birds and fish, they are doing their part every single day. We are the only dodo blobs who try to make this our paradise. Why? Because we were the ones who were deceived by Satan, by Lucifer. And we honestly believed when we were younger that we were supposed to make this our paradise. We were deceived. Can't you see that? This is not your paradise. How many people... How many people do you know have built up their homes trying to make it the perfect place? Never succeeding. Something always happens. God is always reaching out to us. When that thing happens and it messes up your perfect picture, that's your father. That's your father saying, nope, I'm not going to lose you to some nonsense. You're daydreaming. This is a process. And this process is about to be over. You just happen to live at the closure of this process. You do. And now everything is coming. Why do you think Satan is working so hard to tamper with your feelings, to tamper with your spirit? He's working so hard sending out these messengers of this extra information to try and deceive you as best he can. He's offering a little something for everybody. I've, I continue to hear things that are blowing my mind because now people are saying anything to offer to anybody. They're offering everything but Christ. They're on television. They're talking like professionals. And they're offering everything but Christ. Every desire you could ever muster within yourselves. There's somebody speaking on that desire, on how you can have it. Those that trust and know the living God, they can hear it. They know something is wrong with it. Because now is the time for people to come home. And that's when Satan fights most. He's going to fight your relationships. Some of you are going to find out some things about people you don't want to know. You think because you have family members who are blood that all of them are from the Lord. That's not true. That's not what the Word of God says. In fact, the Word of God says the enemy is of your own household. Just because you share the same DNA does not make both people holy. It does not make both people spiritually born of God. That's not the way it works. God always, he already said, he already declared a time of disclosure when people would convey what they truly are. You are not going to like, you got to get yourself prepared for family members, for people close to you to make the wrong decisions, to choose against Christ. You got to be ready for even family members to hate Christ. You got to be ready. You got to know it so that no one tampers with your faith ought not be tied to anybody else but the living God. So if that person falls, you do not fall with them. You can't have your faith tied to this place either, or me. Uh Uh-uh. Because if I fall, you are not to fall. If I stumble, you are not to stumble. That's why every person, you're on a personal walk with the Lord. You can compliment your brothers and your sisters in Christ so long as they believe. You can pray for them when they fall. You can help them up when they desire to be lifted up. But you cannot save anybody. We live in a day when many will start rejecting the simplicity of the gospel. And they will be seduced by fables. You got to get ready. There are too many out there in the world right now trying to build a bridge between a hybrid belief and the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have too many out there publicly mocking Christ. They've not publicly mocked Christ like that before. Haven't you noticed? 
If you go back to World War II, what were the Nazis saying? They were talking about God. Yes, they were. Do you remember any of them ever mocking Christ Jesus? I bet you don't. See, that's the one thing I don't remember hearing. I don't remember these people casting Christ down to the ground and trampling him underfoot in the public's eye. I do not remember that. I did not read about that. But it's happening right now. You have people out there right now saying Christ was nothing. Christ was an alien. You have Christians who are falling prey to this stuff. You have religions popping up all over the place to satisfy the pleasures of flesh. Movements. You have a lot of movements that are tricking people left and right. People are losing their kids to movements. There's a movement right now, and a lot of people are involved, and marijuana was the root of it. And they built a religion just so people would not tell them, don't come around here high. And in this religion, they think they're the original people. They're teaching people how to hate the other races. We're not talking about Caucasians hating everybody else. Nope, we're talking about everybody else hating Caucasians. Do you hear what I'm telling you? It has picked up great momentum. Satan is desperate. And now he's pulling out the stops, causing everyone to turn against everyone. Don't expect for it to end. For those of you who believe in Christ, you better expect to walk with power. You better expect that right now you're being primed to house the power of the Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, which means a time of works is coming. God is not vain. He does not do things for show. Those movements of the Holy Spirit that everybody would desire to be in the public eye, you know why they don't see them? Because in the prophecies it says, Satan is the one that will fill people and perform lying signs and wonders. That means God's people are going to be doing that one-on-one for real. They're not going to publicize the works of the Holy Spirit. They're going to be doing it for real. You don't publicize when you eat a meal, do you? Now, when you eat a meal, you know that if you don't eat, your body's going to die. So you eat that meal out of necessity. You don't go and publicize that because it's a necessity. When the Holy Spirit is working in people, power, it is of a necessity when they heal people because those people are going to have nowhere else to turn. Twelve more major corporations went bankrupt this morning. Seven more major corporations shut down. I mean, a lot of their stores. Bitcoin continues to build. The transition is happening right in front of your faces. You'll have your money. You're just not going to have the product to get what you want. Why? They're consolidating power. This is a power move. We all read all the time that the kingdom of the beast is coming. But when the elements of the beast begin to rise, people start denying it. You're right in the middle of it. You are. My encouragement is to finish your race. As the Lord instructed Determine and commit within yourselves to finish the race, not for the sake of yourselves, but for the sake of the beautiful work the Messiah has already begun in the earth. And I'm talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you agree with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you agree with the salvation of the worst people you can ever possibly know? Because I do because I was one of those worst people that anybody could possibly know. I absolutely agree, and I get it. But do you get it? Do you see the importance? You know, when the Bible when it says, God is not slack concerning his promises, his men count slackness, but is long-suffering to westward. Why? The end result is he desires no one to perish outside of him. He desires all to come to repentance. You know what that means, don't you? Listen to me closely. God is not slack concerning his promises as men count slackness. You know what that means? Everything is overdue. So when men begin to reject salvation, it's all going to happen. Do you hear me? The entire purpose of this long duration of time is that no one perish outside of the living God, that all men come to repentance. So listen to me, when people begin to reject repentance, 
when they know about Yahshua HaMashiach, but they reject repentance, it's over. Do you hear me? That is the major, 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 major sign. When those of this house begin to say, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Everything is coming. And somebody said to somebody, I said, this is happening now. Now you're seeing it. Now you're seeing it. Now you see why events in the world are happening the way they are. And in fact, you see it every single time. We've had small cycles of this, but nothing like what we have today. There are Christians who are going into other religions. They know all about Christ. They served in the church. They're going to other religions. I have never seen the number so great. It seems like every Every 10th person I talk to has some family member going over to some religion that I'm aware of. You know what the worst part is? It's happening here in the USA and it's happening in Israel the most. You better believe the days are here and you better get ready for everything to happen. This, this is that time. Many have anticipated for so long. That's why you see what you see. This is the first time that the conditions have not reversed and gone back to normal, but they're getting worse. This is that time. I'll be back in a few few minutes right here at COT, everybody. Hey, you guys remember when I said that 50 days, right? You guys remember that? 50 days? You guys remember? You guys remember that? Some of you have been asking, what is, the, what is this 50-day thing, right? Are you going to find out? Because now I give you the 50-day Now you have it. It begins, this is 50, this is day two. Day number two. This is day number two. The first one was mine, remember? I said that, that was mine. That had nothing to do with you guys. That was mine. Don't you remember? But uh, today I give you the same time. Now, why is that significant? Because it's tied to the Middle East. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny how things work? How many of you remember the first day of the 50? You can continue to count with me on the 51 days. You guys can continue to count. I gave you 51 because of the late start, but you guys can continue to count with me. Now, whatever happens on those days, I have nothing to do with. I have nothing to do with that. Okay? Nothing. I have nothing to do with that. The end result of these will be tied to the Middle East. Like it's a plan or something. Was it planned? No, it was not. It was not. But that won't convince half the people who find out about it. Oh, by the way, you guys do know when a president dies in Iran, it is 50 days. The term of the vice president is 50 days. You guys know that, right? When those 50 days are up, on that 51st day, right? Well... That's when the world will be in a brand new era. And before that day span is up, Americans and Europe and the UK, you guys better get ready for the betrayal, the big betrayal. You have to prepare your minds for this. Right now, I would say that most people's minds are not prepared for the scale of a betrayal that they'll begin to perceive. It's going to sicken people. You have to get yourselves ready for that betrayal. Because in truth, in truth, We believe in Christ, yes, but we also live in this world. If no one reminds us of these principles and things of the Word of God, we can so easily find ourselves tied up in the business of the world yet again, right? And when this happens, it will desensitize us spiritually. That will be vulnerable emotionally, and people will have outbursts. They will. I'm telling you now they will. And it does not mean that they belong to Satan all of a sudden. It just means that they were not reminded of the Lord's covenant with us through Christ. That's why we have these gatherings. These gatherings are for encouragement, for actual help, right? I truly desire to assist folks. And I know I know we're fought tooth and nail. I know in you guys' life, you're fought tooth and nail sometimes too. But we'll overcome that through Christ. I do know of some feeding happening in this place. I'm very humbled and grateful for that. But make no mistake, that's the Lord working through a willing vessel. I am just a willing vessel. That is it. Nothing more. Just a willing vessel. 
So when these days are expired, and this is day two, after 50 days, when this time is expired, I had nothing to do with that. It's not some insight this time. It's not what this is. But it will deal with the Middle East. It will not be somewhat of a, it's not going to be a tasteful situation. I do want you guys to know something. Of the three that will come forward in the Middle East, and I read something yesterday in the book of Daniel, where people are falling and they're not found and somebody stands up by proxy. And that person is, a, you know, they're, they're destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. But another stands up a vile person to whom they will not give honor the kingdom. And these days are upon us. These people, these people are with us. That's my firm belief, my absolute and firm belief which means there's not much, not as much time as people would like to have. But it's important to me to go over, right, to go over things with the Bible, to put things in context with the Word of God. Because we have computers, I've developed a simulation. But this simulation is tied to the absolutes in the Word of God, not somebody's guesswork. All data points are put in there concerning the Word of God and prophecy so that we can see it. It, it makes for, well, we've had the tools. Thank God for the tools. We'll use them accordingly while we still have them. But it's important that people see how God laid things out, not how man laid them out, how God laid them out. Not to get some specific date. That's not what we're doing this for. It's so that people can see certain layers of God's truth. And, of course, once you see an image of something, it causes the information to stick. Do you know that? Not the charts like people used to use for the book of Daniel, of which all those charts didn't work out too well. We're not talking about charting things. I'm not obsessed with dates. I don't care about dates. I don't live my life by dates. Today is the only day of my life. That's how I see life. I don't look at tomorrow. I look at right now today. But once you see it laid out, you'll have a better understanding. You can actually use that. And because dates are not involved... God gave us another timepiece, and it has nothing to do with dates. It has everything to do with you. Everything to do with you. You happen to be the timepieces, the unfailing timepieces that have never failed since the beginning of time, since the beginning of humanity. God always told us things would happen. Listen to me. Here's how God timed everything. He didn't give dates. I know people read about this date and that date. He gave us time intervals. He did not give us dates. What he did give us was this. He said, when people begin to do this, then that will happen. And when people think like this, those other things will take place. And when people begin to turn against this, that will take place. You are the timepiece. You are. And you know what the greatest miracle I've ever seen is not when the prophecies come to pass. It's when the people become exactly what God said they would become. That blows my mind. That blows my mind. And all of you know what's happening internally in your spirits. The demonstration from the heavens, the wars in the earth, the scares in the earth. All they're going to do is support the truth God has already laid out. But you guys remember the initial question, right? Pray that you're worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. Can all of you see right now that the Lord is discussing determination, right? Someone said, Mike, did the 50 days start over? Here it is, ready? The first 51 days was for me, for you, not for anybody else but me. That, that date still goes. But I'm giving you guys a 50 days starting today. You have a 50 days starting today. May 20th, the start the 50 days we might well minus one we lost a day so it starts today that's tied to the middle east a lot of people may think they know what that is but it's tied to the middle east the middle east is in is is a uh, well it's being presented one way and something else is happening in the middle east it's unfortunate but we'll get to the bottom of it we will but folks today being that day of salvation and because the Lord said tomorrow's promise to no man, then what the Lord has for you, he has for you right now. Reminded of that so that you're not discouraged. Be encouraged by the truth, not discouraged by fantasy. Now, let me get to the Middle East real quick. You guys know that uh, the tyrant died, 
right? Ibrahim, that guy, right? And that, that's, a, that's a global altering event. I know that this guy was terrible. This guy, he did things back in the 80s, yes, but he was also a judge. And everybody who stood before him while he was a judge was ex- executed. They died. So he killed many people. He was a hardliner. He was a real hardliner. But he's nothing. He's, he's nothing compared to what will be. Now, hear me on this closely. This is where prophecy is very important. The true Antichrist is not going to be rejected by the world, but embraced by the world. The true Antichrist is not going to be some moron who starts war all over the planet from the onset. No, he's going to be a person that elicits the sympathy of many nations around the world. He'll do what his fathers have not done. He's going to enrich the place he arises from. He'll be a person of promise. They'll not give him the honor of the kingdom, which means those who sit in governmental positions will not like him. But the people will. In fact, the people will call upon him. And do you see what's happened now? People have burned themselves out. Let me give you a small, let me give you a small scenario of something. Just hear me out on this. America right now. If you can look at the American people, they call out for different leaders at different times. Right now, they're looking for a leader to come forward. A leader who can fulfill whatever they want, you know, fulfill. We're not talking about Trump. We're talking about the average young person out there in the world, believe it or not. They want a very special person to come forward. Satan is the one that will grant them exactly what they want because these young people are not standing on the word of God and they're demanding specific people come forward and they have become quite callous, cruel, and uncaring in how they do things. Everybody else is being washed out, pushed to the side. Period. They're going to get exactly what they want. But only after a demonstration is made of the old system. Hear me on this, Americans. Old system, the system we now live underneath, must be conveyed or displayed to be ineffective in the eyes of the world. Do you hear me? You're living in the days of transition. You're living in the days when the systems of this earth are transitioning to a brand new type of government. Right now, we live on a Roman and Grecian and Egyptian philosophies. That's how this nation, the USA, is constructed. No one can deny that. Rome had power over all the earth. They did everything by Congress. We have a republic. We do. We have a republic. We have a Senate. We, our laws were taken from that, from the very root of Rome. Ideology of advancement, dealing with scientists, that came from Greece. But all of it's going to burn out. In the end, it'll be abandoned. But it must be shown to be full of flaws. It must fail everybody. Do you hear me? It must fail. In order for them to transition all these kingdoms, then what we have right now must fail. But it has to fail in a way that others can instantly install a new type system. What that means is your way of voting, your way of electing leaders, everything is going to change. That's what it means. The young will take over. We already know this. Why would God do such a thing? Why do people think that the system we have now somehow is holy? It is not. It is full of death and betrayal. From day one, it's been full of some very dark things. Until, listen to me, see, a person who is living on the favorable side thinks nothing is wrong with these places. A person who's getting the raw end of the deal. For example, it's like living back in the slavery days, right? A slave would say the place is awful, but everybody else would say it's okay. So what I'm telling you is that if you're one of the unfavorables of any nation, then you know what that nation is about, just like the Lord said. A nation is measured by the poor. How they treat the poor is what that nation truly is. It's how they treat the poor, not how they take care of the rich, how they treat the poor. That's how you evaluate a nation. It's how they treat the poor. So then all nations, to a degree, have fallen to very low humanitarian standards. Even the most basic human things are being abandoned. 
And in the end, we know in Revelation, God is not pleased with any of these lands. Not one. Not one. That all idols are going to be wiped away from all these lands. We know that. It's coming. And nobody can stop that. You happen to live in these days of transition. But before that comes, before it comes, a dark kingdom will rise. In other words, a wayward kingdom is going to rise. A kingdom that's going to look somewhat religious at first. Remember in the Bible it says that this Antichrist, this Antichrist worships a God his fathers knew not. And a strange God, he increases with gold and silver. And he causes people to worship him. So they're going to have a faith system, but it's not going to be like it is now. So how do you get from there? How do you get to that point? You must make all the other religions betrayers of humanity. This is right out of a book. You must, you must have the people see how faith betrays. You know what that means? We also live in the days where they're going to blame what's happening in the world on anyone who speaks for any faith, especially Christianity. They're going to blame us for things that are happening all over the earth. So you're going to see a special team of people rise in every single country. They're going to begin to do not so good things, and they're going to blame it on sites just like this, on places just like all these churches and things that you see. And once that takes place, people will demand that somebody be held accountable. And let me tell you how, because you may say that's impossible. No, it isn't. Say you have a person out there that's preaching the word of God and they speak their heart of hearts and let's say they start speaking politics. Listen to me carefully. They start speaking about politics and they start saying, well, I'm for this person, but I'm against that person. Listen to me carefully. And they lift that person up, but then something happens. Let's say 2,000 people die. Let's say 500 people are killed, right? And they finally catch the person who did it And they say, well, why did you do this? Because I was upholding the word of pastor so-and-so. Because I believe in pastor so-and-so. Now, the people of that congregation are going to say, oh, that's wrong. He shouldn't have done That's wrong. We don't even know who that is. But the, the populace does not care. They're going to hear that and automatically affiliate that person to that organization. And they're going to demand that that organization be dismantled. They're going to demand that somebody be held accountable for the death of those people. And it's not just going to happen once. It's going to continue to happen. And then we have artificial intelligence, which can both, artificial intelligence right now can speak just like me, well, to a degree. I have something in my mouth right now. Do you guys know that? It's a trick. Anybody out there that speaks in public, right? Take something and put it in your mouth and start speaking with that thing in your mouth and learn to shuffle it in your mouth. Trust me. The Lord says we have to be wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. Now, you wouldn't think that would make a big difference in the pronunciation of words. Yes, it does. So put that thing in your mouth right away and get used to it. And every time you speak, put that in your mouth. I like consistency. It does not like those human variants we throw in there from time to time. Anyway, AI, no gum won't work. It has to be something solid. It has to be something hard and solid and just stick it in your mouth like a piece of plastic, something that won't kill you, degrade, right? No polymers going down your throat, nothing like that. You learn to speak like that. Anyway, with AI, it can speak just like people. There were, there were these ad campaigns that have Trump in them that various states are using. That's not Donald Trump speaking. That is AI. And it looks just like Donald Trump is addressing certain things. He may say a name of a representative of your state right? That is fake. That's a deep, that's what they call a deep fake, but that's simple AI. Anybody, any one of you can go online right now and do that very thing in less than five minutes. You can do that very thing in five minutes. When it comes to audio, you can cause me to speak anything you wanted to say. You can. Well, you would have if I didn't, if I didn't have uh, defenses, but you could cause it to speak anything you wanted to speak. Now, Once it gets out there in the public domain, people are not going to care. Flash says that explains some of the things I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the only way to fool AI. It's the only way. Yeah, AI does not like human inconsistencies. It loves data. 
right? It loves the consistency in data. And that's what it depends on. You can't throw that system off. These people out in the world begin to do weird things. They're going to blame it back in the churches. They will even have deep fakes with a pastor where they're going to hear pastors. Listen, they're going to hear pastors speak to the very individual who did the crime to encourage them to do the crime. Now, how long do you think it would take to sort that out? If AI does this, it'll take months, if not years, to figure that out. In the meanwhile, that person's organization is going to be scarred. It's going to have a bad name. And you guys do understand that once you give somebody a bad name, that's it, right? You, you do understand that. That's it. All somebody has to do is go out there and say something negative. Believe me, it works. It works. They say something negative, and all of a sudden, everybody cuts you off. You're going to see more and more of that, more and more. Don't think that's going to be a very bleak time. It's not. It's not. It's going to be a time where the committed, the committed, the, and the true will continue to go forward. They're going to go forward with what the Lord has given them. They're going to do everything they can. to. If, if They're going to use every ounce of what the Lord gave them to go forward. They're not going to do it by fussing. No, they're going to be concentrating on the Lord's work. And by the standards of Christ, they will be kept. You guys know that we're kept right here at COT by God's principles. We should have fallen apart a long time ago. We really should have. Too many things have been against. Just everything has happened. But just like that Pharisee warned the other Jews about, he said, you know what he said? He said, now, if a man starts something, and it's indeed just that man starting it, and it's not true in its intent, then it's going to end up being nothing. He said, but if God has sent somebody forward and you go against that person God has sent forward, you're going to find yourself fighting against the living God. Whatever God sends forward, nothing on earth has power to stop. Nothing. So here in this day and age, we're going to see, you're going to see that principle come alive. You're going to see it at work. You will. Someone said, Mike, you have said repeatedly that only Jesus controls the keys of hell, death, and the grave. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. However, the other day, you told Pastor Paul that a lettered agency can take us out. Uh, if, if somebody wanted to kill us, right, they would make that attempt. That's a figure of speech. It means somebody's trying to kill people, right? That they're not trying to kill people. That's not what they're doing. That was my entire point. That was my entire point. A lot of people walk around and they say, you know, the government's trying to kill me. Do you not know that if the government was trying to kill everybody, they could do it in a very cheap way. They don't have to use vaccines or any of that stuff. They can do it in a much cheaper way. Now, my, my thing is this. Why would somebody go through the trouble of putting some something in, in, in something to kill somebody in a vaccine that nobody wants to take and be ineffective in doing it. That was my point. That was my point. I mean, people go to the store and they get a soda out of the soda machine. That's all somebody has to do is taint the soda can, not even the soda. And that's the end of that. They don't have to do a lot to get rid of somebody. They can be waiting by a gas station, put their fingerprint on your door. You go open your door and, you know, 30, 40 seconds later, you're dead. That's it. They don't have to go into your home. They can see right through your walls. They turn up the value on a very tiny, tiny, tiny device. They do that for about five or six seconds, and you have an embolism. That's it. That's with a double-A battery they can, they can mend your life, right? Now, God controls who lives and who dies, but my point was there are a lot of people running around, and they use that term like it's a badge, like they want to be, you know, that person who the government's trying to kill, or they use that foolishly as some sort of a badge or calling card. Nobody has to work that hard to get rid of a people. They can end a whole, they can, if, if God would allow it, they could end any country in a matter of minutes. Do you know that? They can genetically select only certain individuals of the whole populace of the earth. They can set that up in less than an hour and it will take effect if God would allow it. That's what I'm saying. They're not after people like that. They want to corrupt you. 
They want you corrupted by their master. In a lot of cases, their master has deceived them into believing that their master doesn't exist. Some know they understand he exists, but it's very important for those people to have innocence among them. Let me, let me show you how it works. Can I show you how it works? I'll show you how it works now. Any of you guys who have ever been to the farm, I'm not going to go deep. Just give you the top layer. All right, so here's how it works. You have corrupt, a corrupt person. I'm very corrupt. Right? Esoteric, corrupt, walking with demons and everything. They go recruit people who are in power and understand the necessity of certain types of leadership. And they implore those people to go and get someone who believes in their job. So that's what they do. They go and recruit someone who believes in their job. Then they convince that person, they say, look, this job that you're doing, you're a spokesman, you know, the world needs this. It's the most honest job you can do. So that person is working in honesty. What they don't know is that every assignment they get is tearing down the fabric of humanity. Why do they need an honest person? Because you have discernment. You can tell when a person is duping you. So they want an honest person to speak so that when you hear this person, your discernment will not alert you that this person is an all outright liar. In other words, you get an honest person to do their job. It just so happens that their job is being utilized to destroy things, to transform things, to manipulate things, right? That person has a boss. Now, that boss is coordinating amongst a few people, but there's somebody above him who has an evil agenda. Now, listen to this. He has an evil agenda to salvage humanity. That's normally how it works. You always have that one person who's willing to do evil to save humanity. Th these are middle people, and they believe in that. So they have no problem recruiting innocent people to do bad things. But they hire them to operate in all truth in their job. Like a judge, right? A judge. Suppose we got a judge. A, a person gets a judge to operate in full honesty. But it just so happens that judge is going to operate by procedures, and those procedures come from very bad people. So when that judge sends a person to this reformatory prison uh, center, in truth, nobody ever made it out of that center, but the judge does not know that. And so he truly thinks that this prisoner is going to be reformed. And so out of having mercy upon the prisoner, saying this person has, you know, he has a future, I'm going to send him to this reform place. He didn't know what the place actually is. So that judge is working within all honesty. He does not know what happens in that prison. The people look at the judge because he's a power figure and they say, hey, well, that guy, he's on the straight and narrow. He's doing the right thing. But what they don't know is that that judge, and the judge does not know, that he is sending people to their death sentence. He didn't know that. So they always get innocent people like that to work in honesty, to do a job that ultimately ends in a disaster. This happens all the time. So that when they get before podiums, when they speak passionately about what they, whatever they're doing, it's because they actually believe in what they're doing. If you thought a person could be scared straight and you agreed to have that person go to a specific prison, you would have no guilty conscience if you sent that person to a specific prison that, you know, that works with people like that. You wouldn't. You would think that you're doing that person a service, just like in these end days. In the Bible, it says that many corrupt people are going to be out there and they're going to kill you and thinketh that they do God a service by having you destroyed. That means they're not going to understand what they're doing. The Bible tells us these people are going to think that they're doing God a service by having you condemned. So that means they have no idea what they're doing. That's what it means. If a person thinks they're doing God a service, that they're serving the Lord, then that means they're totally deceived. That's what it means. So then finding a person who's doing that, well, that's not going to help you. you got to go to the source, the, the corrupted spirit that has that person believe that they're doing God a service by having you put to death, by having you turned in, by having you fall apart. See how that works? But don't think, listen, there are so many innocent folks out there. 
who are duped. There are other folks out there that will never escape the delusion they're in. They'll never escape. Never. So in these days, that's why in the Bible it says they will call good evil and evil good. The world's going to call good evil and evil good. So what the world calls good is in fact evil. If the world calls something good, you better believe I'm not going to look upon it nor embrace it. I'm going to have a problem with it. And if they call something evil, I'm going to be prone to believe that that thing is better than everything they put forward because of the word of God. We live in the days when men will call evil good and good evil. Unfortunately, a lot of people who are in the house of God who believe that when the world says that somebody is good, they believe it too. And when they say that somebody is evil, they believe it too. I don't believe the world. The world can only go by what it sees. It only has the rational thoughts. It does not have the spiritual truth. This world exists due to a spiritual truth, not by rational thought. That's right. A flip-flop world is exactly what it is. Hmm? Right? It is happening every day. When a lot of people, Jesus gave us a big hint. He said, woe unto you when all men speak well of you. For so did they, the false prophets who came before you. In other words, when a bunch of people gravitate toward you, that's when you have to look out. That's when you got to look out. Because I'll tell you something. People get irritated with God's truth. People love to hear how their lifestyle is going to grow. People want to hear that they're on the right path. They do not want to hear correction. They don't. I hear too many saints saying, well, all that person does, they bring bad news. They're going to wish they had every ounce of that bad news when the time comes. The worst time that's ever been upon the face of the earth is on its way, and people are none the wiser. They're going to wish they had all the bad news because they're going to try and find those pastors who only told them good, and I'm telling you now, they're going to seek to kill them. They're going to be full of rage. They're going to go to those preachers and say, you did not warn us about this that's coming. You told us it was going to get better. You encouraged that corrupt lifestyle we had. You didn't say anything that this was an abomination to the most high. The Bible already says it. The people are going to seek the lives of those pastors who did such. Sure, they're getting wealthy now, but all that's going to go away. Those folks, the Bible says, those pastors are going to be on the run because a wolf is coming. If you love someone, why wouldn't you want them to have the absolute truth and have it in a way that they would actually hear it, not to cushion something that's an abomination to the most high? That's an agreement to kill someone. That's like being a drug dealer. A drug dealer is not given the, you know, they a person that shifts drugs from one place to another they may not be giving it to people directly but they're not in opposition to that drunk killing anybody because they're helping it get to its destination you got a lot of people out there operating in a specific spirit and listen i'll tell you when the heavens change it's too late when you go outside one day and the sky is golden and it, it does not go to nighttime when you can no longer see the sun even on the clearest days but it looks like a big gaseous cloud because our atmospheres have changed when the clouds are no longer the colors they used to be that bluish purplish hue right with the grays in between but they are full of turquoise and red and blue and all those other colors it's too late it's too late a pyroclastic flow will come by the oceans and all those coastal cities for them it's going to be too late the warning to those cities will be the fish under the underpasses You think they'll listen? No, because they need scientific evidence, and the only evidence they're going to have is when they're burning. Texas went through the most brutal two weeks they've ever had, and not one person at the beginning of the year that's in the professional field warned them about the weather. I tried, but for some reason it didn't stick. How many times did I say that somebody needs to warn them about the weather? Somebody needs to warn them about the summer coming. Somebody needs to warn them about the floodwaters. It will flood and be dry all at the same time. The winds are coming, but did they listen? No. In my case, what will happen? I'm under no illusion. Everything I have to say be heard by some. 
Later on, it becomes relevant. Others will speak things that I've said, like they're the origin of it, but they will have lost the heart of it. But by then, it'll be too late to prepare. Not that I'm the only one with the truth, no. The Lord has set people like me up all over the place. He can set anybody up like I'm set up. And if you guys have heard me for a while, you've been warned about everything. And you may have thought it was gibbering until it took place. That's the Lord's doings, not mine. I'm just willing to speak those things he gives me. I'm not ashamed of them. I know if the Lord shows me something, at some point it's going to come to pass. So I'm not ashamed of what he gives me. In a lot of cases, people say, I'm not speaking that. I'm not going to say that. More and more people are believing in a binary system now, aren't they? Isn't that funny? That's funny. More and more people. But we're almost at a time when it's too late. And they won't have the awareness necessary to stay rooted in truth. They will be shaken by what they see. They will. But now the earth is really beginning to change. And that spiritual barrier is going to be broken. It'll be broken. Listen to me. Here's, here's a lot of people have theories, right? A lot of people have theories. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys something. All theories are going to go straight down the toilet. And God's, God's everlasting word, it will be known in its truth. It will be. Never lock yourself into any man's theory, but have an understanding that God's word is finite. We may not get the whole picture right now. It is finite. It will take place. Hmm? Take place. There's a work to be done still, though. Now, you don't feel it, but everything is different now. Everything has changed. Everything is. If people knew the true nature of this very day, They'd waste no time in whatever they had to do for the living God and in that realm of truth. But because people cannot feel it, they will not act on it, and they will be caught off guard. This guy speaking, I will not be caught off guard. I will not. I'll do my best to communicate things, but I'm not going to be caught off guard. And I, I really do pray that those of you who are sincere, that you'll have the courage to go forward all the way with the Lord, just you and him, just you and him. So it says, Mike, I do believe it will be with the cycle of the moon only so we can show a time so folks will understand. God has given people time to understand. They don't want to understand. They want to be right. And because they want to be right, you better believe the consequences are coming. For five, six, seven hundred years, God has been doing things so that people would understand. They don't want to hear it. Listen to me. When a person wants to hear the truth, they will find it. You can read the Bible, right, for example. And if you're looking in the Bible to prove somebody else wrong, you're going to miss everything else in there. So what I'm telling you is that we find what we are truly looking for. Man has been warned. We have had world wars. This earth has been burnt in the last 2,000 years. The earth has been plunged into darkness in the last 1,000 years, and it was in darkness more than, I believe it was five or six years. In the 50s, a demonstration took place. And you know what they did? They just brushed it off. They know it was real. They got the message. The representatives came, and they did not listen. One of the presidents was too chicken, too chicken to say that it was real that it was an Elohim. You know, it's amazing how they can brief people on things and tell you not to say anything. They just love the world in ignorance, but not one believer in Christ should be ignorant concerning these things. God put the truth in you at birth. Trust what the Lord has already given you. You don't need to learn anything new. The Lord has given you the truth. He's already giving you the truth. Many of you are looking for confirmation through the world. You're not going to find it. What better confirmation is there than to know that the rest of your brothers and sisters were also given the same truth at birth that you were given? There's no greater confirmation. Man has been warned. Who warned people about the storms in the last two years? Not the professionals. The Christians did. Wouldn't that be a warning? Especially when it come to pass. How many times does a person have to come around 
to tell people similar prophecies they've heard before by other people? Why does God continue to have to give the same thing over and over again to people who won't hear him? Well, guess what? Jesus gave an everlasting word, and he put the truth in us. It's time for us to harness that truth. As we get closer to the end, the Lord said men will no longer endure sound doctrine. They're not going to put up with sound doctrine. But they will heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. The truth will not be found in the end days. We're on that line of diminishing things. The last hope is you. You're the last line of defense. You are. But as far as signs so people can understand, no, he's already given understanding. They don't want it. Men are concerned with being right. And unfortunately, when you want to be right, like those Pharisees back in the time of Christ, you're going to be blind. And everybody knows you can't show a blind person anything. And you cannot tell a deaf person anything. But that's where we are. Hold on tight, everybody. We're in that moment now. I suspect it will come fast and furious. So don't be surprised at abrupt changes. Be vigilant. Do that. Certainly don't be surprised nor taken. The, the world has changed as we know it. Be sincere. Look out for one another and continue to encourage each other in the word of God. Listen, and try not to be so concerned about being right, but be very concerned. Be very concerned about your brothers and your sisters being in a right place or righteous place. All of us have some degree of something that's causing us to want to be right about things. You're already fully accepted by the Lord. You have placement in the kingdom of God. Time for the work to be done. The clock is ticking faster now than it ever has before. We just are not going to be given that much time. Be sincere in whatever you do. Be sincere. That's all you have to do. And the Lord will deliver you. Just keep pursuing Christ. Do that in truth. And he will deliver you. He will. Folks, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow right here at COT. Hope. Well, if we have an interruption tomorrow, actually, I may not be here tomorrow. That depends on the interruption. But I may be here at midnight if I miss you guys tomorrow at 7 p.m. I'll be here at midnight to talk about why I missed it at 7 p.m. That means I'm delayed big time. And if I'm delayed big time, then uh, I'm just delayed big time. But we'll go from there. God bless you guys. You guys continue to pray for all of what we're doing here. We're going forward now. Now we're shifting gears. So, uh Continue to pray for COT, all those who are part of COT, that we go forward in the Lord without compromise, certainly in these times. Do that. And pray for those respective ministries that you guys are a part of, too. Keep your pastors covered. Don't forget about them. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. God bless. (laughs) 